how beautiful it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity, and that is through Jesus Yeshua, our Savior. And we're so glad that you are joining us for Hope Today. I am here with Tom and Amy, and we have an incredible guest coming up, Tom. We do. What do you, 40 years. Think of what you can accomplish in 40 years. Well, Yael Eckstein will be with us. She is the president and CEO of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews, and they just celebrated their 40th anniversary yesterday, and we're going to hear about the great things that they're doing and what's going on in Israel right now. So I know you're going to enjoy that. You're going to enjoy hearing about the, the great things that uh, God has accomplished through their, their ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love what's going on in Israel. Actually, it's their anniversary too. Is it the 70th or the 75th? 75th. 75th yeah. anniversary of Israel being a nation. So man, are we actually... Tonight, I was supposed to be at an event for Israel for the anniversary, Washington, D.C. Couldn't work out the details, but man, I mean, right now, something's going on with Israel. Sydney, they're even under attack with, I think the other day, 400 missiles being launched into the area of Israel. So, man, Israel is on the front of our thoughts and our prayers. You know, one thing I remember a spiritual mom once told me is that when it comes to Israel, if you look at Jerusalem, it is literally in the center of the world that God picked out that city for all eyes to be on. And we know that we can see with prophetic signs that everything with all eyes on Israel. And you know, even when we talk about like Christians and Jews, you know, coming together, even my family background, you know, I married into a family where it's like, that's why my last name is Goldman, is that my father-in-law, that he's Jewish. And so just even, I just have such a love for the Jewish people here in Pittsburgh, we have a thriving Jewish community in Squirrel Hill and just all around the world. So I think it is so important in these times and days like these for us to just pray for our brothers and sisters that are Jewish and just the whole community because they truly need our love, our encouragement and our support. Well, that's absolutely true. And, uh, you know, we, we know that you need love and encouragement and support as well. You can always call our prayer partners if you uh, have a need, if you have a something that you just want to pray about for your family or your finances or situation at work, whatever, you can always call and get a hold of a prayer partner and they'll be glad to pray with you. So avail yourself of that. But right now, we want to talk about the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. It's a nonprofit organization who's been building bridges between Christians and Jews and blessing Israel and the Jewish people around the world with humanitarian care, aid, life-saving aid. Today, we're gonna to be joined by the Fellowship's President and CEO, Yael Eckstein, as she shares how her organization has been making a difference for over 40 years. Yael, welcome to Hope Today. Thank you so much, Tom, Amy, Sydney. So good to be with you. Well, you're joining us from Israel. Uh, tell us, you know, just give us a, a little bit of information uh, with uh, what it's like to be living in Israel right now, what's going on right now. Wow. Every day that I wake up living in Israel, I praise God and I don't ever forget that this is what Moses dreamed about, that in many ways I'm luckier than Moses. Um, and so it is such a blessing to live in the place that so many people are looking at and praying for, um, that people dreamed about for generations, that my people dreamed about for generations, and I have the privilege of living here. So it's both amazing, prophetic, beautiful, joyous, and of course it has its challenges. Like you pointed out uh, last week in one day we had 400 rockets. In five days, we had over a thousand rockets. Um, and so it has its challenges. But the fact that we have <coughs> friends like you with us, praying with us, praying for us, um, just makes everything so comforting. Well, and the organization is for friends. It's a, a fellowship, right? A fellowship of Christians, Jews. What was in your father's heart, Rabbi Eckstein, many years ago, 40 years ago, when he founded the organization? Well, I think it's the Bible verse, the book, the book of Psalms says it so beautifully that you quoted when you opened the show. How good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together. And so my father had a calling. I think you said it perfectly. It wasn't just a job or even a mission. It was a calling that it didn't make sense. The only thing the Jewish community knew about the Christian community was what they read in the history books. And as children of Holocaust survivors. People knew that over 70% of Nazis identified as Christian. 
But my father said, no, this is a new generation. It's a generation that's going to bring back the brotherhood, bring back the love, bring back the communication. And it all started with this calling of how good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together. This is what God wants of us. Well, tell me about your organization, International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. Many of our viewers may have never heard of it may not know of your long history and, and the important work that you're doing. Share a little bit about the, the work, the scope of what uh, the fellowship is doing. Well, we have three different ministries and they're all prophetic and biblical. We always say there are so many different areas of need in the world, but when we look at where we are called, we open up the scriptures and see what is God saying? So God says, uh, nachamu, nachamu ami, comfort ye, comfort ye my peoples. And so when we're talking about war and security needs, the fellowship is in the area of security. We've built thousands of bomb shelters um, and many other security programs that we've implemented both under fire and also after war when those needs are identified. And everything we do is in the name of Christians who love and stand with Israel. So imagine this, as the rockets are falling, there's a woman named Ida, who's 90 years old, Holocaust survivor, who lives in Southern Israel, who doesn't have a bomb shelter, who doesn't have anyone to help or think or support her. And the fellowship comes with food because she has been under rocket attack for five days and doesn't have any food left. And we say, this is from Christians in America America and around the world who love you and want you to be safe. Um, the same thing for a family who didn't have a bomb shelter and when the rockets were falling had to just sit together and pray in the stairwell. Well, now they have bomb shelters because of the fellowship. And every time they go in and they turn on the news and they hear everyone hates Israel, everyone's critical of Israel, suddenly they see that sign. Christians love Israel. So one of our ministries is security. Our second ministry is poverty, providing food to the least of these. So the elderly, the orphans and the widows. And the third is bringing God's children home from the biblical land of the North, from Ukraine, across the former Soviet Union and anywhere where Jews are at risk. So it's all prophetic. What an incredible mission and vision that you have. And man, are we praying for you and that ministry. What, what would you say to Christians in the Western culture just that are like, why should we be concerned about Israel? Why should we pray for Israel? What, I, I, maybe they feel disconnected. What would you yeah. say to that person to connect them to the land and the people of Israel? Amy, that is such a good question. And you could find verses both from the Christian Bible and from the Old Testament. Of course, we know um, in the Christian Bible, it says that Christians are grafted onto the rich olive tree of Israel. And so as Christians, this should ignite a wonder and an exploration and wanting to know, okay, what are these roots that I'm grafted onto? What are my, what did come before me? What was Jesus studying? What was he celebrating? What was he uh, reading when he was reading the scriptures? And then you get a real deeper meaning for what it means as a Christian to read the Christian Bible. And uh, that all happened in Israel. I mean, of course, it was in Jerusalem over Passover that Jesus had the final supper. And it was in Bethlehem in Israel, where all everywhere you walk in Israel, you see the footsteps of our forefathers, both as Jews and as Christians. And of course, when you look in the in the Old Testament, you see everything revolves around Israel as far as promises, as far as prophecy. And then you have the promises of God, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we know those who pray for the peace of Jerusalem are blessed. God doesn't make many promises in the Bible, but in Genesis 12, 3, he says, bless, I will bless those who bless Israel and curse those who curse Israel. And he promises those who bless Israel will be blessed tenfold. And so there's something intrinsically holy, sacred, powerful about Israel, not that I'm saying, but that God says. And when we look at the scriptures, and even more relevant for us today, maybe for someone who feels disconnected, when you look at the prophecies that we're living today, you could only understand these crazy, sometimes dark times, if you understand what God's intention and vision is with it. And we are word for word living so many of these prophecies from 2,000 years ago that Ezekiel and Isaiah and Jeremiah saw 
saw that Jerusalem is center to that. And when you're tapped in and you're holding on to Jerusalem, like you said, the center of the world, suddenly everything falls into place and it doesn't look so dark. It actually looks hopeful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That just brings me to the next question is that you just mentioned something that there's so many prophecies that point to Israel and things are unfolding and we're seeing things happen in the news. So can you just share with us some of the things that you have recently seen prophetic signs that are unfolding right before your eyes and the people of Israel that right now that are happening? Wow, Sydney, you do not have to look far and I love that you asked me that. So thank you so much. Um, you could go to just the last conflict that we had not even a week ago where a thousand rockets were launched at very, very, very crowded Israeli cities. Mm -hmm. And either the Iron Dome shot them down, which is, I mean, an incredible invention of technology that no one could have even dreamed about, that in real time, less than a second, when there could be a hundred rockets launched in less than a second, all of the mathematics takes place to see which rockets are going to land in residential areas. And another rocket is launched from the Iron Dome to destroy that specific rocket, one out of a hundred, exactly the right rocket in midair. I mean, that is Hine lo yanum velo ishan shomer Israel, the guardian of Israel neither slumbers nor sleeps. And those that land inside of Israel landed right next to a home that there was a whole family inside or on a car that the family got out of the car two minutes before that. You hear stories every day of these miracles that God does that just are hard to fathom. There was actually supposed to be a Backstreet Boys concert in Israel that there was a lot of um, discussion whether they should cancel it or not. They ended up canceling it. That was very, that you know, you don't want to change moving on with life because Israel is always in conflict. You, you want to continue living as normal, but they decided to cancel it, which is something that Israel wouldn't normally do. Well, a piece of the rocket landed exactly on the stadium that the Backstreet Boys were supposed to be playing at. And so you see these stories that it's it's prophecy that God will always protect Israel, that he's the watchman on the wall, that he doesn't slumber nor sleep. Um, and so that's one area that just last week, you could write a book on the miracles that took place. But of course, when I greet the um, Aliyah flights, the flights of Jewish immigrants from Ukraine, from the Arab world who are coming home on fellowship flights, that is Christians that brought them home to Israel. First of all, the fact that there is an Israel for Jews to come home to is something that we haven't had for 2,000 years. And then that it's Christians bringing them all the prophecies, say, on the shoulders of the Gentiles, right? They'll bring them home on their shoulders, their children uh, on their hips and on their shoulders that they'll bring them home on wings of eagles, right? That's the name of our ministry that brings Aliyah, that's exactly prophetic. So the fact that the Jewish people are coming home and that it's Christians making this possible I mean, just a hundred years ago, if you told someone that, they wouldn't have believed you. Right, wow, fantastic. We're gonna, we wanna pray while you're with us here. Um, Yael, I'm gonna ask Amy to pray in just a moment, but as you're telling uh, us about the, the, the incredible scope and the wonderful things that are being done, is there one, I'd, I'd like to put it on a personal level, is there one person that's, that you've helped, that kind of their story speaks to you or their, the, 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 that just, you know, that just stays with you, somebody's story that you could share with us. Yeah, thank you so much, Tom. There's a woman, Ludmila, who I always think about. Ludmila lived in eastern Ukraine. She's a Holocaust survivor. Uh, she's over 90 years old, and she's bedridden. And when the war in Ukraine broke out, she couldn't obviously go to her shelter. She had no one to come visit her and bring her food. Um, the fellowship was there bringing her food for many, many years. And our, we didn't have any people in the first few days that were able to go out because it was too dangerous for them. Um, and once we continued after three days going and visiting her and bringing her food, she started crying and saying, I just want to go to Israel. I just want to go to Israel. But there was no way to take her out. She's a bedridden Holocaust survivor. Well, the fellowship arranged for volunteer doctors in an ambulance to drive into eastern Ukraine under fire, put her in the ambulance, bring her over the border to Moldova, where we flew her on a private chartered volunteer flight with a doctor connected to her side to Israel. And I went to go visit her uh, on Passover. We had our staff and team that went and brought her food boxes and we continue to care for her here. Um, and she looked at our fellowship staff and she said, if it weren't for this ministry, I would be dead right now. 
And looking at this woman who endured the Holocaust, who for the second time had to leave her home, just to be so grateful to be living in Israel, to be cared for, and to know that it's Christians who are doing that, for me told the entire story of the fellowship. We will do anything to save a Jewish life. And it's Christians who make that possible. Wow, man, that, if that doesn't shake us to the core, I, I don't know what will. We are here to be God's representative, his hands and his feet on earth. And we just cannot thank you enough for what you and your ministry is doing. You know, as we take time just right now and we pray for Israel, and we pray for the Jewish people, it's really personal to me because I've developed some incredible friendships in the Jewish community here. And at dinner recently, one of the, the women I was sitting with said, I am fascinated, I am infatuated with the blood of the lamb. And she was talking about the Passover and I'm thinking about Jesus. So let's pray right now for Israel and for the Jewish people. God, I just come to you right now. You are the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And Father, I just thank you when they see Christians that they will see friends of Zion. They will see friends in them. They will see life and unconditional love. And Father, I pray right now for the safety and the peace of Israel and Jerusalem. Yes. And God, I thank you for this ministry and all that they are doing to bring Christians and Jews together for such a time as this. Father, I pray right now that you open the eyes of the hearts of the Jewish people to see Jesus, to see the Savior, to see the Redeemer, to see the fulfillment of all of the prophecies. And Father, we just thank you right now that they, this ministry will have more than enough to do everything that you have accomplished uh, and, and foretold them to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Yael, thank you so much. Thank you for everything you do. God bless you. Well, thank you so much for being with us and congratulations on 40 years. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you too. Well, we're going to take a quick break and then we will have a uh, scripture. I think it's one that really, really applies and we're going to have a time of ministry. We'll be right back. Cornerstone Television exists to spread the good news through Bible-based programs and a fully staffed prayer line. Through CTVN, lives are saved, hearts, minds, and bodies are healed, and Jesus is lifted high. We can't do this work without you. Would you consider sending a gift this month to keep the gospel moving forward with power? When you give, we'll send you Listen, Love, Repeat, which presents scriptural examples of those who lived alert, including Jesus, who noticed those who least expected to be seen, gives creative ideas for showing love to friends and family, suggests practical ways to reach out to the lonely, marginalized outcast, helps you comfort the grieving, and so much more. Ask for your copy of Listen, Love, Repeat when you give today. Call 888-665-4483 or go to ctvn.org slash donate. Thank you for your generosity. Hope happens here. Thank you for your generosity. We do believe that hope happens here. And also thank you for your love, prayers, and support for Israel. Let's dive into a scripture right now together as we talk about this Psalm 128 verses five and six. May the Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you live to see your children's children. Peace be on Israel. Peace, shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken be on you, Israel. You know, when I was recently there, I was amazed. I, I, I don't know why I didn't see this before, but you know, in Jerusalem, you've got Muslims, Christians, and Jews that are all in this city together, very strong, distinctive um, viewpoints coming. And it was like, you know, what we see at one location, the Muslims are seeing something else, the Christians are seeing one thing, the Jewish people are seeing one thing. It was very, very enlightening. But one thing we know for sure, Sydney, is that Jesus, 
Jesus is the savior of the world. And we want the Jewish people to see that. We surely do. And you know, one just thinking when you're talking, Amy, about this, all the three different faiths, you know, one thing I just always heard about, we're all like, it's like a big, it's a big family conflict that's going on that goes all the way back to Abraham and just different things that we see. But you know, I think it's so beautiful that we're seeing now more than ever, we're hearing these testimonies, you're seeing these stories pop up on YouTube and on TikTok and different social media, how Yeshua is appearing to Jews and Muslims like never before that he is going before them and revealing himself to them. God is doing a mighty move in the midst of the conflict. And even though we see there's a lot of gruesome darkness and things that are happening in Israel and different parts of the Middle East, we know that God and Yeshua is on the move. Holy Spirit is moving in into those deep and those dark places where it's like the center of like prophecy is unfolding because God is going to show up and to show out. And one thing I love is even we were talking about what Yael was bringing up about, you know, it's how beautiful it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. One of the things you see like all across is that the diversity diversity and the different ethnicities like this. The kingdom family is a beautiful, beautiful family. And we talk about prosperity. It's this prosperity of us all dwelling together as one through Christ, mm -hmm. loving on each other, moving together as one. That is the greatest prosperity we have is having an understanding as we, as the ecclesia, that we have the power of the kingdom of God to move because of Jesus. And we can see signs and wonders and miracles. And that's what I'm believing for I'm in this season. I know so many around the world. You know, uh, that, the verse that we read uh, about, may you see your children's children. Hey, check that one off. I've <laughs> seen my children's children. Praise the Lord wow. for that. I mean, that's you know, awesome. to, you know, that's a promise that's been fulfilled in my own life. But, you know, as I think about, uh, we've, we've been talking a lot about family and we've been talking about the, the, the family of God. And of course, there's different levels of that, different ways we refer to it. Of course, there's the, you know, there's the Christian family. And in some sense, all of humanity uh, created by God and God desires them to be a children, not just the children of, of creation, but a children of adoption, okay? Mm -hmm. That they, we are all in that family of God. Like we've been, uh, Yael mentioned it, we've been grafted in as Christians, grafted wow. into the root yes. of Israel. But yet there's a, a, an adoption that God wants to do with Israel, with Muslims, with Hindus, with everyone who has some faith or no faith. He calls to them. He calls to them to be, be known as a child. It says, uh, uh, it says in the New Testament, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Received who? Well, received Jesus. Receive the, the, the Savior as Lord and Savior in their own life. And I just want to ask you, if you haven't done that today, if you've got a form of religion, but you don't know that family, you don't know that children's part, you don't know that to be a, children of, a child of God in the way that he means there, you can do that today. And you, all you need to do is open up your heart. And this is not the time to be judgmental or critical or like, angry at people that don't see eye to eye mm -hmm. with you. That's not how we approach this thing. We're staying, you know, in, in Israel, David is a big deal. So we're staying at the King David Hotel and we're Ubering to a couple of places. And we have this Muslim driver, actually several Muslim drivers. Where do you live? Oh, I was born and raised on Mount Olives. And we're like, that's the coolest thing ever. We're like, we're brothers. We're, we're brother and sister. We're like family. And they're like, yeah. I mean, you, you have to develop a relationship, a friendship, and a deep sense of love towards people that don't see eye to eye, and you pray for them. I mean, man, we, we would touch them. We'd say, we are praying for you and your family and that God would bless you and keep you. And so, it, Sydney, if, if ever there was a time for us to use wisdom in our words with people and in relationships, it's now. It surely is now. And just, you know, one something that God just placed on my heart is, is when we're talking about this whole show today about the connection and the thread with Jews and Christians and just even in the Holy Land, it just reminded me when I got married, it was a very interesting thing is that I, this, I had a greater understanding of what God talks about, about being graphic in, right? And so I got married into this Jewish family. My husband was actually adopted by his Jewish 
stepfather who's our father and just even understanding that because I am now married into this family, I know that I, there's certain things that I have received and I have inheritance of is because of Israel. So we can do Ilya, like his brother went there and just different things like that. And that's what Jesus is done in a greater scale. That when Jesus died for us, he was a Jewish Messiah, died, laid his life down for us. Then he, he I mean, we were the pearls of great price. He laid it all down for us and rose again. And because of the blood of the lamb, that we are able to be adopted by the heavenly father, that we're able to come to the father, to the gates, to the throne of heaven and speak to him and have a relationship with him and receive revelation from him. It is an amazing thing to be adopted. And guess what we get? An inheritance. We understand our identity. We understand who we are, our destiny through him, our purpose in him. That's what it's all about. And when you have your identity and you know who you are, you can wear it with a badge of honor like I am a son of God. I am a daughter of God. It is amazing. It is an amazing thing that we have through Yeshua and through the Holy Spirit. And so today, we just want to ask you, are you a son? Are you a daughter? Have you taken that moment to truly surrender all? And I tell you, friend, it is the best decision you'll ever make. Because no matter what bombs, no matter what storms, no matter what comes your way, you have a heavenly father that's gonna fight for you, a heavenly father that's gonna love on you, a heavenly father that's gonna search the deep places of your heart and deliver you and to heal you and to set you free so that you can walk out with the kingdom family as the ecclesia, as the kingdom of God. And we're gonna see change in this world like never before. We should have a desire in our hearts, friends, that everyone should know who Jesus is because it is the best decision, it is life changing and it is amazing. So if that's you today, if you want to say, you know what, I'm ready to fully commit myself. I'm ready to surrender all today. Give us a call at our prayer line at 888-665-4483. Tom, what are your thoughts? You know, it doesn't matter where we find ourselves. God knows your story. He knows where you are. He knows whether you're on the mountaintop or down in the pit of despair. And it says that his arm is not so short that he cannot reach there. In other words, he can reach you wherever you are. So God's reaching his hand out to you right now. All you gotta do is take hold of it. Let him pull you up out of whatever you find yourself in. Let him pull you to himself and give you new life in Christ. That's what the message is today. That's what the message of God is today, Amy. We're really the seed of Abraham. I mean, this is, this, we should feel very connected to the land of Israel because that's where Jesus came. He died, he was raised, he was born for you and for me. And because of Jesus, we can find hope. And if you find Jesus, you find life and Jesus changes everything. On tomorrow's Hope Today, encouraging young women to live a life of meaning and authenticity. Podcast host and author Grace Valentine encourages girls to stop settling for what the world's image of perfection is and to start embracing a life filled with more joy, peace, and meaning. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.